Awesome. Well, I'm, I'm like super grateful that you're here uh, with me doing this. I'm going to go ahead and, and start recording right now. Okay. Um, so selfishly, I wanted to learn about LinkedIn marketing for my business. And I know you charge a lot of money for this, which is why I was like, hey, you know what? I'm going to build a YouTube audience so I can uh, try to get the best information for free. No. Yeah, that's fine. It works. It works great both ways. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know how much you can disclose because I know a lot of this is stuff that you talk about in your workshops and trainings yeah. and things that you do. So um, as many goodies as you could possibly give us, but this is definitely a subject that I've been wanting to learn more about is, uh, is LinkedIn. In fact, I was just on a podcast the other day um, with another creative entrepreneur who is saying, Hey, you're, you're doing a great job on LinkedIn. You have a great, uh, you know, a lot of followers. And so I said, I, I really don't know what I'm doing on LinkedIn. Uh, I don't have a strategy around it, but it, it seems like the, uh, the, the more conversations I'm having, everybody's thinking about doing LinkedIn right now. Uh, and so, yeah, that's why you're here. So tell are, me we a bit. are we recording? Cause this is good right now. This is good stuff right now. Yeah, no, this is it. We're, we're recording. And, and by the way, uh, we, we're going to edit the recording. So if there's anything you say that you want me to cut out, yeah. just let me know and we can cut that out. No, not at all. I'm just, this is what you just said is what I'm hearing all the time, which is why I was hoping that you'd already hit the record button because people are, people are using LinkedIn and you don't even know it. They're searching for you already. I have, was in a conversation a couple of weeks ago and these, it was a private message and people were going back and forth and they were saying have you ever worked with and i don't remember the person's name and i'm not going to disclose it publicly either but let's say have you ever worked with john doe and the other person said well no i've never worked with john doe but i looked john doe up on linkedin and either john doe didn't have a profile or the profile wasn't complete so i don't think he's legit this is how we're looking at LinkedIn now. How else? We've never, ever had a format like this to be able to search for people and to look for people, especially business professionals, to find out what they're all about. And now we have this amazing platform. And so I think that we're, a lot of people are, are catching on, they're figuring out I need to get on LinkedIn, and then they're figuring out that there's, there's a lot more than just creating a profile. So you can just pop up a profile, but then you have to connect and engage with people. And by the way, I have absolutely no problems giving you all my secrets. So it doesn't matter to me because the more secrets I give and the more information I give to people, the more I can help people and the more that, you know, this will grow. So I'm, ask me anything you want. Awesome. Well, I, I hold to the same uh, philosophy of educating and positioning yourself as the expert. When you get, everything's out there available for free, you might as well be the one to, to be the one with the answers when people are asking the questions. So I appreciate you uh, giving us all the goodies. Yeah, now, you got be, it. Before we jump right into it, like, how did you get into it? What is your background? How did you get into this uh, whole world of LinkedIn? Because I know this has become kind of like a specialty for you. Yeah, right. So what's happened for me is I I'll go way, way back is that I graduated with a double major in television, advertising production, and advertising. So I left college and I got my first job in TV advertising sales. And for 20 years, I was either a salesperson or a sales manager for media companies. And in 20 years, that changed a lot because it, came, it was just selling television to eventually now they sell television and digital solutions and all kinds of video solutions. Well, I decided a few years back that I wanted to start my own business and I wanted to do something new. I'd actually always wanted to have my own business, but I just never could figure out what it was exactly I wanted to do. I had toyed with having an advertising agency, um, but that really what that wasn't it. I just didn't know what it was. So I decided that I was going to get uh, certified to facilitate sales workshops for a very large uh, professional speaker across the country and across the world. So I got certified in, in his works and I started to work my business with that. Um, and as I was doing that, I was using LinkedIn to promote my business and to create my expertise and, and my professional image and my professional background and it was working really well for me. So the more I started using LinkedIn and testing it, the more people were asking me what I was doing and how I was doing it. So can I, little can I by interrupt little, and ask a question? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, what year was this? So for me, so LinkedIn's been around for about 16 years, but for me, this was four years ago. Okay. And so, so we're in 2019. 
Yeah, 2014, 2015. It was before Microsoft purchased LinkedIn. That's, that's what I was wondering. Okay, so it was before they kind of took it to the next level. Yeah. So you were, and not, not, even though they've been around for a long time, I would say it's um, an early adopter of using this yeah. just um, for your own sales uh, consulting business. Right, exactly. So for my speaking business and for my sales consulting business, a little bit of both. Um, I, it, there was a break in there, Sean, where I did get recruited to go back to a corporate job. And so I did that. But even when I did that, I was still maintaining and testing LinkedIn. And then I started writing profiles for other people and started doing work in their profiles. Then I was testing a lot of different things to see what was working in my profile and their profiles. Very cool. So, so basically you just started using LinkedIn, not to sell LinkedIn as uh, advertising no. or marketing, but to but for yourself to build your own That's professional right. network. You had a level of success and people noticed that and you started helping them build their LinkedIn profiles. That's absolutely right. Yep. I did not like have this goal that I was going to be a LinkedIn expert. I, I have captured lightning in a bottle, which is a really awesome thing to do. And anytime any of us can do that, it's just brilliant, but you don't even set out to, you don't even know that's happening. So yeah, I was using it for myself and having great results. And then people started asking me to help them. So how are you using other platforms uh, or how would you compare LinkedIn to other platforms? Um, and like, what is your percentage of allocation of time and uh, dedication spent towards the other platforms? So I do use other platforms. I use Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. Uh, this is funny. Everybody wants to use Instagram. I just shut off my Instagram account. And there's a reason I did that, which is, I, I think for a lot of business owners, entrepreneurs, and marketing people, unless you have a full-scale marketing team, like, like they hire your company, Sean, it's, nobody can be a 40-hour-a-week social media marketer for their business. I mean, I certainly can't be. So what I looked at is what are the main platforms where my best customers are hanging out, and I want to manage for those platforms. So for me, LinkedIn is the number one place where my prospects are, are at, can be found and want to be engaged with. My prospects don't want to be engaged with on Facebook. The CEOs, CFOs, CMOs, CSOs, all the chiefs of businesses and companies, some of them might want to be engaged with on Facebook to talk about business, but most of them want to be, they would rather be engaged with on LinkedIn and talk about business on LinkedIn. So to me, that's a big differentiator is the culture behind the medium. People for Facebook and Instagram want a personal culture where for LinkedIn, they want a business culture. You know what, now that you say that, I kind of have noticed that because we, we are using Facebook a lot. We, so I love Facebook marketing and we won't stop, but I know that we need to, to, uh, to, to wake up towards LinkedIn. And what I've noticed with um, some of our larger corporate accounts, so we're B2B, right? We sell uh, services to, to other businesses. Um, for the larger companies that we work with, the C-suite executives do prefer uh, the more professional uh, social media environment of LinkedIn, as opposed to the smaller businesses that we might work with would be uh, more relational on Facebook. So right. one of the things that we teach people in marketing is, is know who your target audience is and know where their attention is. And I, I love that you've just said, you know, your audience, the people you're trying to attract their attention is on LinkedIn. So that's what your primary focus is. It sounds like. Right. So that is my primary focus. I mean, I work a lot. So I have two different kinds of audiences. One is the professional corporate audience. The other is speakers, consultants, coaches. Those people in general want to communicate more on Facebook. So I'm there on Facebook. We speak on Facebook. But for the businesses, the corporations, they just don't want to have a business conversation with me on, on LinkedIn. Um, the other thing is that there are some things that we can do in LinkedIn that are not available on Facebook and Instagram. So for example, one of those things is publishing articles. When you publish articles in LinkedIn, one, they have a publishing platform. Facebook and Instagram do not have a publishing platform. You can publish your article on your website or WordPress and you could put a link there, but you can't publish it inside of the platform. When you do that, your article 
becomes searchable on Google, Yahoo, and Bing. So that means not only can they find you and your content within LinkedIn, but they're going to be able to have access to that content on Google as well. That's a really big differentiating point, I believe, between the different social media. So the articles and the content that you're publishing through LinkedIn is uh, crawlable and, and search engine optimized to where they'll link directly to it from Google. So that's, so it helps with SEO. That's right. So the articles, not your shared updates, but the art articles that are in publisher are available there. So sometimes what happens is people get discouraged when they put articles in LinkedIn because they're not doing it on a consistent basis and then they don't see a lot of views, but they see a lot more views on their shared updates. Right. And so the, they think, well, I'll just do shared updates because I'm getting a couple hundred views or I've, I've had as many as 3,000 views on a shared update, but I'm only getting 100 or 50 or 25. Well, the problem with that thought is, well, there's a couple different things going around, but one is that when you publish articles, long form articles, it increases your SEO in LinkedIn and within Google, Yahoo, and Bing, and the articles are searchable. So what I tell people is, here's the secret to doing that. Repurpose the articles. I don't even look at articles as articles anymore. I look at things as ideas. So you have one idea, one concept, and that concept should go as the published article or a blog, whatever you want to call it. In LinkedIn, they call it articles. It should also be repurposed into a video and it should be repurposed into a meme and it should re be repurposed into a mid-sized shared updater post and a few quotes along the way. One idea or one piece of content really can go far. And I've had people challenge me and say, well, do people really want to see my content on video and reading and whatever? And yes, they do. For one, they're probably not going to get served at your content in all of those different ways. You're going to reach different people. But two, people have a different learning styles. Yeah. So some people want to watch video. Other people want to read articles. I worked in TV news. You go to TV news website and their top stories are in video on the top and an article on the bottom for that very reason. So you want to do a little bit of, uh, you want to do a little bit of each of these things. So that way you are increasing your SEO, but also you are, you are engaging with people on their own learning style. I love that. Yeah. One of the concepts we, we teach uh, in marketing here at Butler is we call it content stacking. And it's the exact same thing that you're talking about. It's that my creative capacity is only so far. Like I could think of maybe like five or 10 good topics to talk mm -hmm. about. But if I got each of those topics and repurposed it in different formats, so maybe wrote an article about it, did a video, made a short form pl uh, post, yeah. did an email, I took one piece of content, split it up across like five different things. So like this video we're doing right now, I could probably turn right. this into a blog post and then share right. it on the different platforms. Exactly. And I think people get, people get frustrated for two reasons when it comes to content building and content in education is the new marketing. That's what's working and that's what people are searching for and they want it for free and they want you to provide value in that way. And that's okay. That's why I say, I don't, I don't keep any secrets. I'll tell them all to you because I want you to have the information and it's just easier for us, you and me, Sean, to give people the information than them to have to spend, you know, hundreds of hours like we have researching our specialty. Right. <clears throat> so they get frustrated because either they don't know what to write about or what kind, kind of content to create. That's the number one frustration or they don't have time to do it. And I generally find the they come up with the time excuse because they really, it really goes back to the first thing is I don't know what to say or what to, to write about. So what I tell people in that case is that, you know, think of all the problems that your customers have. They come to you with complaints, problems. Um, they need help from you, ideas. Those are the things that you want to write about. Give your secrets away because that helps establish you as the expert. And by doing that, by creating a frequent and ongoing engagement in LinkedIn, you will increase your searchability again within LinkedIn and also within Google, Yahoo, and Bing. So by uh, creating great profile is one thing, but the engagement and the content piece is a whole separate side of it that you need to maximize if you want to, if you want to optimize this, you know, frankly, in my opinion, one of the best social media platforms there is for business professionals. 
That's great advice. Um, what, what would you say is, are some of the like misconceptions people have about LinkedIn, why, why they would be reserved as, um, in, in not moving forward or going all in? Um, misconception, I might not use it for, for I, I might not use that word. Let me think of some misconceptions. But one of the biggest challenges I see is that people get in LinkedIn and they're overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. I get in, I'm overwhelmed. I don't know what to do. I don't know where to start. Um, the profiles look like resumes. I'm not looking for a job. These are the common things that I hear from people is that they're overwhelmed. So there's two sides to the coin on LinkedIn. One is the profile piece. The other is the engagement piece. LinkedIn has this really cool thing called a social selling index. And we can even give people the link whenever you post this. Um, it's it's linkedin.com slash sales slash SSI for social selling index. And what they do is they measure your branding, but they, they measure your profile, but then they also measure your engagement. So it's very important to make sure that you have a customer centric profile that's written and maximizes keywords and the keywords that you want to use are what your customers are going to be searching for when they're looking for you. Oftentimes we get into such a great expertise in our business that we start to look for a lot of jar we start to use a lot of jargon. And that's not what people are searching for is our jargon. So you have to stop and think, well, what are the natural words and phrases that people are searching for? And you need to use those in your profile. Sometimes they're annoying, like um, everyone's using thought leader right now. So, okay, we don't want to use thought leader because everyone else is using it, but that is going to be a search term. So you want to plant it in there somewhere. You don't need to make it the highlight, but you want to put it in there um, a few times. So that way that keyword search becomes and creates a relevant connection to the person who's looking for you. The other side of the coin is the content and the engagement. And that's a lot more extensive. And people say to me, but I don't have time to do LinkedIn. It's just, it takes a lot of time. And my thought is if you are a person who is in a business development role, and that could be the CEO of a company, depending on the size of the company, to sales and marketing. If you're a business development person, you don't have time not to be in LinkedIn because your time spent there is on business development. So if you're just in once a month, that doesn't really help you. And this is such a great tool to connect and engage with business decision makers that you don't have to be salesy or pushy or aggressive, but you are giving them value. This is the place to be. So I look at that and say, if you think five minutes a day is too much time to spend on business development and prospecting, you might want to shift your thinking hmm. about this tool because you might actually be missing opportunities for yourself by not taking it and putting your arms around it and making it one of your biggest pieces of your marketing strategy. So, and I think you kind of touched on it already too, is the types of content. I think one of the reasons why people might be um, hesitant to share more regularly is because, well, how much do I post and what type of content? So like on Facebook and Instagram, if I'm building my personal brand, mm -hmm. uh, I could share pictures of my food and my kids and my, you know, whatever I'm doing throughout the day. And then they have like less curated type content for even like stories. It's very, it's not professional at all. And so when it comes to LinkedIn, I think people think, well, maybe all of my content needs to be super polished um, and professional. Like what, is that true? Should it be? And uh, how much should they be posting per day? And what types of content? So I think for posting on LinkedIn, it needs to be a little bit of a combination. And I made up this funny word, blarticle, because there's a blog that is really more um, conversational in style. And then there's an article that you think of as more of a professional polished article that's going to go into that's going into a magazine or some type of academic work. You want something between those two. You don't want it to be so conversational that it's not professional, but you don't want it to be so academic that people can't read it. People are skimmers on social media. 
So you want your content to be like you're talking one-on-one -on -one to your particular, who, your audience, whether it's a prospect or somebody else, but you want it to be one-on-one -on -one like that. You don't want it to be too long or too short. Too short, you don't get SEO. So what's short? Under 350 words, 500 to 750 is a really good place to be. You don't want it to be too long because we don't have attention spans that are long on this type of format. If you're in a magazine article and we're flipping it out and reading magazine pages in your hand, that's different. But in this format, you don't want it to be too long. Break it up. How often should you post? Well, if you are not posting at all, if you're not doing any blogs or posting at all, my, my idea is that you start with one blog, or I'll say, I should say one idea, one concept a month. And you take that concept and you put it in a blog or a video. Now, if you're a video person, start with a video and upload it to YouTube. YouTube gives you a free transcription and then you just clean it up, take out the timestamps and make it so it's readable. And so do one, art, one article or blog or blog article a month and then do uh, one or two videos a month, short videos. People don't want long videos unless it's educational. Um, people rather have short videos and then the post a short form which would be up to 1300 characters would be kind of a mid-length actually a mid-length post twice a month no more than that it overwhelms people and then post short posts uh, every couple of days but that's with your one idea your one concept the other thing to do is think of who the top uh, the top resources are in your industry. So I take a look at, I love Harvard Business Review. So if I'm not writing an article, I'm curating content. And I'm looking at Harvard Business Review. I go into their website, I have a, a subscription. I type in sales, I look for relevant sales articles that I like right now, and I'll share their articles. I've shared entrepreneur articles. Share articles from publications and magazines that are relevant for your audience and then also share other people's information so I'm I have friends who also teach LinkedIn I share their stuff too people say well why are you sharing your competitors information because to the person who is seeing it on the other end they're not seeing it as my competitors information they're seeing it as a, me providing a resource now if I were Chevy I would not be sharing Ford's information right not saying it like that but as a consultant you know it is fair for me to do that because I just couldn't take all the business in the world anyway so share content you don't have to create it all your own I love that too because it kind of takes the pressure off of you being the only person and, and I, I think one of the things that um, it does is it positions you as someone who's reading about these things and learning about these things continually so you're not just talking uh, just creating content yourself but you're actually looking what other people are saying about the same uh, stuff in your industry. Right, uh, exactly. And look nationally, look regionally, look locally. So I live in Sacramento. Sacramento Business Journal is one of the best publications in town or the best for business information. So I'm constantly look at, looking at their stuff and reposting their information. And then anytime I get uh, good connections like you, Sean, you start posting more information, I start sharing your information too because I already know that you're sharing, you're going to be a person, a resource for me that's sharing content on branding, which is part of LinkedIn, what we're doing with LinkedIn. So that I look for, I look for content, I'll call it partners, I'm just making that up, but people who also are speaking and giving education in the same area that I am. How, how does someone go about growing their audience? Now, let me preface this because I know that um, a lot of times when people think about social media marketing, they ask me, Sean, how, how have you been able to, you know, get your audience what it was on Facebook and on YouTube? And I want to do that. And they don't realize that I, for me, I, I probably could have been a lot more strategic about it, but it was literally years of just creating content. And so like they want the shotgun approach to something that took me kind of mm -hmm. years to create. But is there a way to maybe accelerate that because they have zero followers or they don't have a good network on LinkedIn. Um, what are some practical ways they could um, maybe accelerate the, the, the rate of growing their audience and the best practices to do that? Well, I'm going to give you a secret tip right now. And you probably don't even know this because I didn't, I didn't share this with you before. So if you are out in a networking event and you turn on your Bluetooth on your smartphone and then you go to LinkedIn, there is a button on the bottom of your 
uh, your app, you have four, you have five icons. You have the home icon, you have the people icon, and then you have the messenger, et cetera. If you click on the people icon, what comes up on the t under the top bar is your total connections, find nearby, and then add contacts. If you click find nearby, what happens is your Bluetooth starts to pull in all of the people who are also on LinkedIn and have their Bluetooth on. So if you're at a networking event or you're speaking and you do this, you can that start to build awesome. audiences so quickly. I'm doing it right now to see if there's anybody in our building that there has anybody in your office. Yeah, I'm in my own office. So, uh, you know, my husband would be my only connection and I don't have a profile for my dogs. Like that I, is a know. really good uh, tip. Okay, cool. So basically cool? leave Bluetooth on when you're at a networking event and you could just add them right then and there, send a request. That's right. And you can show them how to do it. Now I will add one thing to that. My strategy for connecting with people is to always have a personalized message so I can go back through my messages and remember where I met people. So if you do this strategy, that's fine. You'll build, you'll build connections. But then go back at the end of the day and write them a note and say, I met Jennifer at Bitwise and I really enjoyed connecting with you. That way, six months down the road, you can go and do a search and figure out where you met somebody. So that's one really quick way of growing your network. I love thing, that. Yeah, and that's, and that's a new tool, Sean. You can use, a lot of people don't know about it, so you'll be the life of the party. Uh, I'm <laughs> sure you already are, but that'll be one more step. Were you going to say, I, I think I interrupted you on the, the second tip of growing your audience. One of the things that I was going to say is it sounds like, um, you know, one, one of the things that I forget to do is I'm, I'm handed business cards a lot and I'm meeting new people all the time. Like my weeks are primarily in meetings and a lot of times they're new yeah. client prospects or um and sometimes it's sim as simple as just sending a request to connect that way yeah so let's just say let's okay so these see these little baggies <laughs> they're actually they're not weed i do live in sacramento but they're not, <laughs> that's not what they are they're business cards so I go to things and get business cards and I come back and I always, I, I make a joke about it. Like everybody has, you know, baggies or boxes or whatever, or a drawer of business cards. So what I do with my business cards is that I come back and I automatically connect with you on LinkedIn and I send you a message. So if we didn't do the cool little Bluetooth things, sometimes I forget, I come back and I, I connect with you on LinkedIn. And you know what's really cool about that? I've noticed when you connect with people, you get a bump in their news feed. So as long as you have a great profile and you are adding content, you're going to get a bump in their news feed. So imagine if you go out and you meet with somebody who could be a great prospect and then you connect with them on LinkedIn. Now you have a private message going to them, thank you for the, thanking them for the connection and whatever content you're putting in. This could be a great strategy, a content strategy is what do I want that person to know about my business? Because you're going to get that automatic bump in their news feed. So that's another way to grow your connections. And then I'm going to add some other ways to grow your connections too, is think about who your past or current clients are and go connect with those people. I mean, sometimes we just forget. We think, well, I already know these people, but go connect with them because then you're going to continue to keep top of mind awareness of these people and you never know who they might introduce you to. So current customers, prospects that you want, might want to do business with, but don't go selling them right off the bat. Nobody wants to be sold the first time you talk to somebody that'll immediately get you eliminated. And then I say also take a look at people who are engaging with your content. So if people are liking and commenting on your stuff, you can go see who the list of people are and then send them a private note and thank them for looking at your article or your post or engaging with you. Go look at their profile. Find something you have in common. Look at their articles, share their articles, comment on their articles, and then connect with those people as well. So I think those are four different ways that you can grow your connections pretty quickly. And it's pretty cool when you see that people are engaging with you and you're engaging back and then you go in and you connect with them. I love that. And, and one of the things that um, is a good takeaway from that is that when you add a new connection, you get a bump in their feed. And um, when, now one of the things that the first thing that they're going to see is your profile. 
And um, I, I know that you have a very particular, um, almost like a checklist of things that you got to think about when it comes to having a good LinkedIn profile that a lot of people get wrong. Like what are the elements of a good profile? Yeah, uh, I have reviewed over 250 people's profiles. And I, I had put this call out once that I was doing this free webinar and I, I had 98 people, 97, 98 people register. And I went and reviewed every single one of their profiles. It took me two days, but I did it. Wow. And then I have, re so I know I had a hundred, you know, almost a hundred there, but I've reviewed over 250 uh, people's profiles. So I created this checklist uh, based off of a couple different things. One based off of branding and positioning, which you cannot measure in LinkedIn. Only a professional like you, Sean or me, can uh, measure your marketing content and your words. So branding, and then also the technical piece of LinkedIn. So that social selling index I was telling you about, what things do you need to do there to help increase that and increase your searchability? And then also I'm going to add findability as well. So things like if a person goes to their pro, your profile, can they easily find your email? There's a contact info button and you might have it in there, but not everybody uses that. So do you have that in your profile throughout many different places so it's easy to find you? So you can get that self-assessment on my website. It's darlingpartners.com. And right on the front, you can go get that self-assessment. But here are just a few things that are involved in this self-assessment. And I'm going to give you just the prime real estate examples. So prime real estate to me is anything that's above the fold. So you know this, but not everybody does. So I'll just repeat it. Is as soon as you start to scroll your mouse down the screen, that's content below the fold. So what's above the fold on LinkedIn? This is your storefront. This is when this is your billboard. When your prospects are driving by your busy freeway, what is going to what's going to be on that prime real estate? And here's where a lot of people go wrong. What they they start to create connections and then they might even create content. But what they don't realize is that what happens when people click on your profile after they viewed your content? Are you attracting them or are you retracting them? Are they coming over in the first impression? they're getting from you is that your profile is not complete or it doesn't even have a message toward them the banner number one the big banner is blue automatic you need to go change that to being that billboard don't make it messy don't have too much information um, LinkedIn measures that you have a banner but they don't measure what's on the banner they don't measure the branding put your logo put your email put your phone number whatever it is information that's pertinent to your business, put it there. A positioning statement, put it there. Don't make it too wordy because we never drive by billboards that are too wordy and get anything out of it. They, get, they need to be simple and clean. Um, make sure it matches your other uh, social media and your website, your other digital assets. Do I know if I'm on your website and your LinkedIn and your Facebook business page and your YouTube that I'm talking to the same business or company? We want those things to be consistent. So have your designer do those consistently. So the banner is a big part. The headshot is really important. And I've seen some people leave the headshot blank and have a beautiful banner. Well, the problem is, as you're engaging with people, they don't see that beautiful banner. They only see your face or your lack of a face or you put your logo in there. LinkedIn is a person-to-person -person medium. It's not a person-to-business medium. Yeah, they have business pages, and you should create a company page. But we're there to connect with individuals. And people want to see your face, and that's the first thing that people build trust with. So make sure you have a really nice close-up uh, picture of you in that, headline, in that, in that um, profile picture. The next piece that is also prime real estate is your headliner. A lot of people just have their, um, their account executive or the, their title, but this one little piece of information shows up every single time you post. So it is, to me, the most important and valuable piece of information, and the banner's huge too, but this is the thing that shows up every time. So you don't want it to say account executive, account executive, account executive. You might want it to say something like, um, I work with businesses to help them look like million dollar marketers. 
you know, Sean and I did this thing before he, he answered a few questions for me. And one of the things I pulled out is your customers want to look like a million bucks, right? Mm -hmm. So how do you help people? What if every time you're posting, it says, I work with businesses who want to look like they have mil they're million dollar marketers. Because maybe they only have a hundred thousand dollar budget, but they want to look like million dollar marketers and you can help them do that. So that's the kind of thing on your headliner we want to make sure we get across is what's in it for you as a customer working for me, working with me. And then I the last that. thing I will leave on that is the first few lines of the summary. The first 10 words are so important. And if I could do, challenge people to do one thing, it would be to go and look at your first 10 to 20 words write them out, read them out, and what do they say? If they say, I'm an award-winning author, eh, nobody cares, right? If they say, I have 15 years of experience in advertising sales, eh, nobody cares. If they say, I'm going to help you look like you're a million-dollar marketer, everybody cares. So we want to make sure that the messaging is, has really strong messaging that's positioning you for whatever best in class you are. Everyone's different. So whatever it is that secret sauce, the magic, your superpower, how you help people, that's what we want to reflect in your best prime real estate on LinkedIn. Jennifer, thank you so much. I think this is like a ton. I feel like I just drank out of a fire hydrant for uh, all the stuff that I need to do. I'm going to uh, you know, definitely take an assessment of my, uh, the story that I have there and, and redo some things on my LinkedIn. What, one last thing is like, what is maybe one or two next steps for someone who might be watching this? Like, okay, where, where do I get started? They, they got a lot of good content. Like what is the first step they should do to update their LinkedIn profile? I would say, ask yourself whether you think you can write the marketing copy or you need some help. Because I know if, even for myself, Writing it for myself is a struggle. Other people writing it for me, uh, me writing it for other people is, is much easier. And I'm a professional speaker, so when I hear my bio, I'm like, oh my gosh, who is that person? She sounds so successful. That's <laughs> not me. It's because somebody else can see what you're great in. So you might have to ha get some help and ask some clients, ask some people what they think of you so that you can write great copy for that. That would be one thing, but I would definitely take a look at the prime real estate and focus there on the prime real estate. If I was going to start somebody somewhere, I'd probably tell them to update their banner because it makes a huge difference in what they see is updating their banner. Go get that free resource on my website, darlingpartners.com. Go get the self-assessment. It gives you all the tools that you need to develop an awesome LinkedIn profile. Um, I have a book called um, actually my book just got released on Kindle yesterday. So for $4 and 99 cents, you can go get 52 tips on how to increase your leads with LinkedIn. Like it'll be the best five bucks you ever spent on Amazon. So go there too. But to start, I would say, make sure you do your profile work first because we want the first impression of you to be awesome. We don't want to start building massive audiences who are going to get a first impression of you as not what you want it to be. So build that profile first. Awesome. Guys, spend the five bucks on that Kindle. I got the paperback version, so uh, the, I, I have that, but I might just get the Kindle because it's much more convenient because I have my books always in my pocket. Jennifer, thank you so much for today. What, uh, one last thing is where, where can people find you and what action should they take on your website? What do you want people to, to leave this with if they want to take the next step and they want that professional help uh, with LinkedIn and they might want to hire you? Like, How do they do that? So you can email me or you can find me on my website, jennifer at darlingcoaching.com. It's my website's Darling Coaching or Darling Partners as a redirect, but jennifer at darlingcoaching.com. Come find me there and what we'll do is we'll talk about what help you need. I'm all about saving people money. So if somebody needs writing help, we go all the way and we'll do, we'll do your entire profile for you. But if you already are far enough along, I might just tell you what you need to do to update it. So typically I have a conversation and figure out where you are, how you like the work, whether you are a super busy person and you don't want to do it yourself or you do want to do it yourself, we'll figure that out and we'll get you in the right direction. What I could add is it's really important to get your LinkedIn profile updated now 
Some people say, well, I want to wait till I launch my new website. Well, the challenge with that is a website is a launch. People aren't going there because they don't know about it. It's reactive. You tell people about it. But people are going to LinkedIn right now, today, looking for you. So you don't want to wait to go and make your first impression be awesome. You need to get your first impression up and ready to go now. So email me, Jennifer jenniferdarlingcoaching.com. Find me at LinkedIn, Jennifer Darling, Sacramento. There's another Jennifer Darling who she was on the Bionic Woman in the 70s. So I've got a little <laughs> bit of competition with her. Yeah, I know. My goal is to out Google her eventually. <laughs> Outrank her. There's not very That's many right. Sean Tom Bagahans out there. So I'm in luck. That's right. Yeah, you're lucky that way. Who would have thought there was another Jennifer Darling? But as it turns out, there are slews of them. So Jennifer Darling, Sacramento, and you'll find me. Um, connect with me on LinkedIn. You know, if you tell me that you heard or saw this on Sean's uh, show, that's hard to say. Saw this on Sean's show. That's like a tongue twister. If you tell me that and then just put in there like um, blogging, I will send you a free article that will give you some ideas on content of what to blog about. Also get, help you with the readability factor. It's one of the biggest struggles people have with content marketing and I will solve that in a short blog for you. So just say, Sean blog help and i'll get that to you <laughs> they'll they'll you'll be able to decipher that well again thank you so much jennifer guys i'm talking to you my audience if you have any uh steps to next steps what do you do do everything jennifer just said go to her website download the free resource go to kindle get the uh, book five bucks take the assessment and if you know that you need help she's here to help that's what she does Jennifer, again, thank you so much for your time today. Uh, we're going to take all this into consideration. We're going to update our LinkedIn and take it to the next level because I know that this is the platform that uh, for B2B uh, that, that people need to be thinking about today. So thank you again, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. You're welcome. I can't wait to see what you create. Yay!